to the lead on lap number 38. Kenzer drops back to second. Still running now in third position, we should say, is Ron Schumann, who has gotten around Joe Saldana. So Schumann is third, and Joe Saldana runs in fourth position. Fifth is Keith Kaufman. Sixth is Mark Halderson. Seventh is Larry Rice. Eighth is Rich Vogler. Ninth is Ken Schrader. And tenth is Ricky Hood. So those are the top ten as Bobby Olivero continues to lead. One of the concerns of the front runners is tire wear, believe it or not. Yes, it is a dirt racetrack, but they got to be careful not to wear them out. There is Ronnie Burke in car number 33, one of the star performers of our non-qualifiers race. And right behind him is Billy Englehart, a former winner in this division. There goes Englehart to the high side. They're running near the back of the pack in approximately 13th and 14th position. But Englehart, Burke, along with Gary Irvin, there you see a pack of cars. Kamani is also in there. They have really been going at it for six or seven laps, running two, three, and even four abreast. Look at that. It's like the start of a race right now at better than 100 miles an hour, sledding right on the edge on a one-mile dirt racetrack. There is Walt Kennedy, the California driver, on the inside, the right-hand side of your screen, at Dengelhauer, outside of Kennedy. Ronnie Burke trying to find a combination to sneak to the inside of Amani. Track racing at its finest on the one-mile dirt race track at Bridgeville, Illinois. Well, this is usually the way it is in a championship dirt race of this length. The leaders will stretch themselves out, but then you'll get these little groups of cars that seem to battle with each other all day long, and that's what's happening right now. But there is no battle for the lead at the moment, as Bobby Olivero has stretched out the advantage on Sheldon Kinzer to about a fourth of a straightaway. So Bobby Olivero in car number 16 showing the way here in the middle of this 100 lap race or nearing the middle of this race. Olivero is uh, truly amazing. He really came to the championship dirt car division with no experience on the big, long dirt racetracks. But he has always been spectacular on these. We've come in it a couple of times. He's a former champion, and he always seems to come up with the ability to run up front. But this has got to be a surprise as he pulls away from Sheldon Kinzer. time I see Bobby Olivero in a championship dirt car in the mind of a, of a Hoosier 100 not too long ago. But Bobby Olivero's car was smoking very badly for most of the race in the lead. And the question that confronted the USAC officials was, should we black flag Bobby Olivero and keep him out of the lead? And the interval is 2.1 seconds between Olivero in first and Kinzer in second. It was a very enthusiastic crowd that of course supported Bobby Olivero out there on the racetrack and he continued to run with a very badly smoking car but that's not the case here today in Springfield Bobby Olivero and here is Rich Vogler Rich Vogler who had moved up from 14th star position into the top 10 has slowed down on the racetrack in turn number two it's all over for Rich well Vogler looking back over his shoulder for two reasons, trying to find a hole in traffic. He was as high as sixth position at one point. Now he accelerates after finding an opportunity to drop down on the rail, but I'm pretty confident that Rich Vogler is on his way into the pit area. Any speculation there on what, uh, what could have occurred with Vogler? Well, Bob, the way he accelerated after he got to where he wanted to be, it doesn't look like an engine problem. I would guess that it's suspension, chassis, or maybe a tire malfunction because Vogler does not look like that his problem was underneath the power. Well, we'll keep an eye on him here, here in the main straightaway. Rich Vogler will not stop in the pit area. Instead, he goes behind the wall. Vogler is out of the race. We'll be back with more coverage of the Tony Bettenhausen 100 from the State Fairgrounds in Springfield, Illinois. Battle for fourth position is a good one between Joe Saldana and the number nine of Mark Alderson. That's the race we're watching right here in turn number four. Saldana in fourth place, but right behind him is Mark Alderson. Saldana is a former Hoosier 100 winner. He's probably got a little more experience. 
that our ballers are in this type of racing. You see Joe all over the racetrack as far as the groups that he's experimenting with. You see him right now moving up just a little bit to close off the angle that Mark Alderson had on him. Alderson looks to be running a little quicker right now than Joe. But Saldana, the veteran that he is, knows pretty well the geometry of driving a racetrack. And there are little subtle moves that Joe can make of only about three or four feet, but it will rob Mark Alderson of as much as two racing lanes. And that's what's going on right now. Joe Saldana trying to use up racetrack to hold back Mark Alderson. As we continue to watch this race for fourth, we'll give you the cars out of competition. Steve Cannon, Roger Rager, Emmett Hahn, Bob Ciccone, Jerry Niemeyer, Gary Irvin, and Rich Vogler. All of those cars have dropped out of the race. Joe Saldana started second, has fallen, however, back to fourth place. And Mark Alderson, who started this race in third, is now back to fifth position. We are exactly halfway through this 100 lap race. 50 laps have been completed, and at the halfway point, it is still the number 16 of Bobby Olivero leading. Sheldon Kitzer running second, Ron Schumann is third, and then number 70 and nine battling for fourth place. Here's the leader, Bobby Olivero, having an easy ride so far. Pretty much the inside groove on this racetrack. Out of number two, onto the back stretch. Six to ten at this juncture. Larry Rice, the defending champion, runs six. Keith Kaufman, one of the surprises of the race. Out from the East Coast, runs seven. Ricky Hood runs eight. Ken Schrader, ninth. And Mike Peters in car number 86, running a surprisingly strong 10th position after starting in 19th. Running in 11, all on the lead lap is Dana Carter. This is a very historic racetrack here in Springfield, Illinois. They've been running here since 1934. Down through the years, some very great competition has been seen here among the greatest race drivers ever. One of those, of course, this race is named in honor of Tony Bettenhausen, who was killed at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway back in 1961. It was hoped that his son, Gary Bettenhausen, would be competing here today. He entered the race, but unfortunately missed a plane connection and did not arrive in time. More than halfway, another problem that potentially props up for a leader. We got to tire wear earlier. Another thing is engine temperature. As we again go back to the car, 15th to 20th. And look at these guys. They're still going at it tooth and nail. That's Mike Peters, who does run in the top 11. He is on the lead lap of the leaders. David Carter trails him, but right behind Peters and Carter are about four or five drivers. Billy Engelhardt is among them. The number 33 car of Ronnie Burke also, as well as the 47 of Elvin Belty. And they have been trading paint, swapping positions of the racetrack, downside of the racetrack, back and forth, experimenting with racing lanes all race long. You never know that these guys were going after it for 15th through 20th. Well, it was a good qualifying day for Dana Carter in car number 26. He started this race in ninth position, but unfortunately has dropped back out of the top 10. Good competition here between Chuck Amati and Billy Engelhart. Amati in that number 53 car on the high side of the racetrack and Engelhart to the inside. Here they come off of turn number four. Right ahead of them is the number 26, driven by Dana Carter. Down the straightaway, speaking at perhaps 140 miles per hour, then pitching the car into a corner as hard as your courage will allow you as we go back up front to remind you that Bobby Olivero continues to set the pace here. He goes around Elvin Belty, and Olivero will now be working his way through that group of cars that has been going to combat with their selves for the last 20 laps. Earlier today, Jerry Reeks described going into a corner on a one-mile dirt track as going in and scaring yourself to death and then trying to save your life on the way out of the turn. And I guess that pretty much summarizes how to get around a big sweeping turn on dirt. Well, these 
two drivers have been battling for third position for quite a while, and now Ron Schumann in number 21 is in third, with Joe Saldana falling back to fourth position. Now, although these cars used to be what we would consider Indianapolis-type cars, of course, they're not anymore the Indianapolis-type cars since the rear-engine car came along. These have been outdated. These cars are not powered by Cosworth engines, as are Indianapolis-type cars. They are powered instead by Chevy engines, and all of the cars competing in today's 100 Miley Hertz Springfield are powered by Chevrolet's. There was a car powered by a Ford entered, driven by Richard Powell from me in Oklahoma. However, that car did not show up here today, so all of them are Chevrolet-powered cars. Ron Schumann, car number 21. Joe Saldana, car number 70. Third and fourth final. And now Saldana moves into third as Schumann got high in turn number three and lost a little bit of time. So Joe Saldana now moves back into third. And Schumann is fourth. We'll continue to watch this race. This is by far the best one out on the racetrack. Schumann insisting on running that high groove and very often getting out of shape. And here is a car that is out of shape against the retaining wall in turn number two. Well, at this point, Bob, we just don't have the angle to pick up who that car is. Well, it's in a position of the racetrack where it's very difficult for us to get a camera locked on it, but it is to the outside of the second turn. Here we go. It's That's number Keith 58. Kaufman. Keith Kaufman, uh, who was running comfortably up in the top 10, he was holding on to the number seven position. Keith is from Mifflintown, Pennsylvania, a big strapping driver with a very athletic build. Matter of fact, uh, very much similar in appearance to Sheldon Kinzer. In 1980, he was the Port Royal Pennsylvania champion. Matter of fact, that happened to be the middle of four years of championship work for Keith Kaufman at that racetrack in northeastern Pennsylvania. There's the number 75 car, the Bill King-owned race car that has won twice this year with two different drivers behind the wheel. And one of those drivers was Doug Wolfgang, who's the pilot today. So Wolfgang receives service on that car as the wreckers will move to turn number two to take care of the stalled Keith Thompson car. And now we have another car in the pit area, and here's a development, the number 21, of Ron Schumann, he was in fourth place, is in the pit area. He was the driver we were watching do battle with Joe Saldana just before this yellow, but it's a tire problem that has brought Ron Schumann into the pit area. They have changed the right rear tire on that car, and away he goes, but he lost, I believe, a lap, Larry, on that pit stop. Bob, I believe you're right, and what happens more often than not as the track dries out, the tires have a tendency to break loose. The engine might over rev, you, you might tap a cylinder that way, but more often than not, what occurs is that you overheat the rear tires and you begin to get excessive tire wear. Dana Carter is the next driver to come to a stop in the front stretch. Carter had moved up to 10th position in the standings with the retirement of Kaufman as well as the temporary stop of the number 20 car, 21 car of Schumann. Now, Carter's crew right now is trying to get the right rear tire off to avoid him losing a lap. They got a chance at it, but they don't seem to be making very good progress. Dana revving the engine, hoping to be able to get back onto the speedway before the field comes around. The caution flag laps in a lap two count in a 100 lap event. The tire is now on Carter's car. They are affixing the knockoff hub, hoping to get it on. The field enters turn three. Now to the midpoint of uh, turns three and four, coming out of the fourth turn, and it does not look like Dana Carter is going to be able to stay on the late lap. The field comes by.